I'll probably just fill in some of these equations. You can fill in the test result yourself. Uh, try to practice going through the table again and again until you know what, uh, what are the tests. So this is just, uh, I'm just writing down the ionic equation. So ionic equation form the stuff that, you know, do not dissociate. As I mentioned, this is aqueous if it is sodium, ammonium, or potassium salts. However, it could also be solid if you have group 2 carbonates because group 2 carbonates are insoluble in water. So you're not going to get them aqueous, okay? So insoluble in water, so they're going to be solid for group 2 carbonate. Chloride, so these are all precipitation. So you've done this practical before, but I really didn't uh, go through it at the time because I was anticipating that we will go through as a lesson when we actually cover this thing. So the silver chloride is white in color. The silver bromide is cream in color. So you get cream precipitate. The silver iodide is a very easy to identify, very noticeable, very, very obvious yellow color, which you also saw with your own eyes. All right, um, this nitrate, the nitrate, the test is with add aluminum foil. So the aluminum foil is a solid. And then add aqueous NaOH, then we warm. All right, I'm not going to write the equation for this, so you can ignore that, writing the equations, until we come to the next topic, which is on redox. So not to worry too much about the equations, uh, but the result is we will get ammonia gas form. And how do you know it's uh, ammonia gas? Well, you know, it turns, the gas turns, you have to write the, 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 the test for the gas. The gas turns red lemon's paper blue. Okay, because it's an alkaline gas, what is very obvious is you will smell the ammonia gas, all right? So actually, we can smell them. We call it pungent. So it smells a little bit like when you go to the toilet, when you go to pee in the toilet, it's the smell of urine because your urine can give off ammonia gas. Sulfate, so we use barium nitrate or barium chloride. As I said earlier, it's a precipitation reaction. So it just give you this white precipitate, very, very common reaction. And of course, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to write the equation for this sulfide. You actually test it with acidified manganate 7, and it goes from purple to colorless. Just to go through a couple of these equations. So I'll show you a couple, and then you can do for, for the rest. So I did say ionic equation. Ionic equation must have stat symbol. If you do not have stat symbols, then your ionic equation is not correct. Remember, you don't show all the ions. You show the important ions. We know that we get a white precipitate, so there's ALOH3, and it's a solid, and it comes from Al3 plus aqueous with 3OH minus aqueous. However, you also notice that it says that the white precipitate will dissolve in excess NaOH, and this is something that will become more important uh, as we go through more complicated topics. Uh, much later on, okay? So ALOH four times, and this is minus, okay? So if you have Na+, plus, you get Na+, plus here. So this is basically what happened with the white precipitate in excess NaOH, you form this salt, which is aluminum with four hydroxide. It goes from something insoluble to something soluble again, all right? So that's why you say a white precipitate is observed or a white precipitate forms and then you say it is soluble soluble in excess and the OH as for ammonium so this ammonium with uh, sodium hydroxide is a very important ionic equation is one of the five general equations we covered uh, when we did chemical formula so ammonium ions plus the sodium hydroxide. It's not just sodium hydroxide. You could use calcium hydroxide or anything with hydroxide. And this is aqueous. And they will give you ammonia gas and they'll give you water. So in essence, so what happened is um, we get ammonia gas and the ammonia gas you have to test for it. So what happened is, um, so when you add sodium hydroxide to ammonium, you warm it, you heat it a little bit and we get a pungent gas pungent gas is formed so we know it's ammonia but you still need to test for it uh, it turns red lemon's paper blue so we know it's ammonia ammonia gas forms 
And what we can see here is that this equation is balanced. This is the perfect ionic equation to describe what happened. This loses the H plus because it's acting as a base or an alkaline. And this OH minus accept the H plus to give you the water. OH minus plus H plus give you water. There's your classic neutralization. So this is your acid and base reacting together. This is your classic neutralization. Although we don't exactly call it neutralization because you're producing something alkaline. So be very careful there. All right. Chromium 3 plus versus iron 2 plus. They are the two common things that you know, exam like to ask because chromium 3 plus will form a green precipitate. So a green PPT is formed, but then this iron 2 plus also form a green precipitate. So I think in the qualitative analysis note, it says that it's a dirty green, but these two greens are very easy to distinguish if you are in the lab. You have seen this green, very nice emerald jewel green kind of thing. Very dirty green, very disgusting kind of green. However, the best way to write on paper to differentiate them is to use excess and an OH. Not NH3, but use excess and an OH. And this is soluble. Soluble in excess and an OH. In the same way that this aluminium hydroxide you know, dissolve in excess. Chromium-3 hydroxide also dissolve in excess and OH to give you that, but not the iron-2 hydroxide. So I could, of course, write the precipitation reaction. So I'm not going to write the, the other equation for when it dissolves, uh, but it's going to behave very similarly. I'm just going to write the ionic equation for the precipitation of this chromium-3 hydroxide, chromium-3 plus OH minus. This iron-2 plus, it forms the iron 2 hydroxide precipitate and then I would get FeOH twice as a solid ionic compound and ionic equation will have the stat symbol, must have the stat symbol. And this green precipitate is insoluble in excess and the OH. Alright, so these are colored stuff as well, you can fill it in yourself. The zinc 2 plus versus the aluminium 3 plus, these two are very, very popular questions. So zinc 2 plus versus aluminium 3 plus, you need to use uh, ammonia in order to differentiate, oops, sorry, you need to use ammonia in order to differentiate zinc 2 plus and aluminium 3 plus. As you could see, aluminium 3 plus and zinc 2 plus, these two results are exactly the same. You cannot, you cannot tell apart aluminium 3 plus and zinc 2 plus just by using NaOH alone because they give you the exact same result. So you need to use ammonia where Al3 plus uh, they form this white precipitate which is aluminium hydroxide but it's insoluble in excess ammonia. Okay, in aqueous ammonia is insoluble whereas the zinc hydroxide so the white precipitate is your zinc hydroxide because ammonia also contain OH minus ions. You can't see it from the formula, but then we'll come across this topic called acid and bases, where I'll show you where this NH3 give you the OH minus. As a matter of fact, I will show you right now. NH3 dissolve in water and they give you the ammonium ions as well as the hydroxide ions. So that is how you get the hydroxide ion from ammonia, even though you don't see the OH- in the NH3 itself, but then they react with water to give you the NH4 plus and OH-, and therefore they can give you the precipitate, okay? But the difference is between ammonia and hydroxide is that with zinc 2 plus, this precipitate will be soluble in excess and they give you a colorless solution, just like all the zinc 2 plus compounds, even though it belongs in the first row transition metal, zinc is not considered a transitioned metal because it does not display the normal characteristic of a transition metal, which is to form colored compound, to form colored solid, to form colored solution. Its solution is all colorless. Okay, so that's how you differentiate between zinc 2 plus and Al3 plus. I think I'll leave it there for today. Sorry, not just today, in fact, for this whole tutorial. So I've got this flame test, uh, oops, sorry, this table with NH3 as well. The ionic equation is going to be very, very similar to for the, uh, for the precipitation reactions with the hydroxide because as I mentioned, ammonia is a weak base. In the presence of water, they will reversibly dissociate or ionizers to give you NH4+, which is ammonium, as well as the hydroxide ions, and that is what makes the pH greater than 7, make it alkaline. 
all right so so these are the table results the flame color as i mentioned earlier these are additional tests for you to identify the cations so these cations are soluble i mean they, they form soluble salts as well so li plus na plus nk plus they form soluble salts so there is no ppt with oh minus very difficult to identify but then from the flame color very easy to identify i think this was lilac this was red and the sodium was like orange yellow okay very easy to identify with that uh, calcium 2 plus was red as well barium 2 plus is like a light green and then the copper 2 plus the flame color okay not the color of the solution because these are colorless solutions except for copper 2 plus as i mentioned flame test is not the same as solution test be very 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 careful okay so this copper 2 plus is pale blue solution okay so i'm talking about the solution and now i'm not talking about tests with sodium hydroxide or ammonia I'm talking about the flame color of the cations it will be this really green very nice green color let me just double check the table because i don't want to get it wrong and i have to edit it later so this is a um, blue green kind of flame and then there's yellow instead of orange i think i got that one wrong this is orange red so it was uh, orange red for calcium orange red for calcium and then it was blue green for copper 2 plus so you can view that um, tutorial video the experimental tutorial videos on um well flame color flame test for cations that was in a separate video that i did a couple of months ago i also show you in class as well okay thank you for watching i'll leave it there uh, in this tutorial it's been a really long one but this wraps up pretty much the whole topic on chemical analysis where you really 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 need to know these particular tables so these tables including tests for anions cations and gases as well as flame tests these are what are given in a practical paper you will never ever be given this in a theory paper so make sure you go in fully prepared the more you do it the better you get at it the more you practice writing them down on a blank piece of paper the better you remember it and the more you actually uh, practice the equations and stuff the better you remember it Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. I'll see you in the next tutorial video. Thank you for watching. So do go through some of the question tutorials so that you understand how these concepts are applied across the different type of past year paper questions, which are probably uh, why you're doing the O-level or the IGCSE curriculum to begin with. All right, don't forget to click the button on the bottom right here to subscribe to the channel and share the channel widely with uh, people you know who can benefit from these tutorial videos. Follow me at ptt.chemistry on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Telegram in order to get connected and comments and stuff. Okay, thank you for watching. So moving on to the next bit, uh, I think the next tutorial that I'll show you is to do with one of these double salts. Okay? So it's also double salt, but I'll just spend the rest of this tutorial focusing on ammonium iron 2 as well as ammonium iron 3 okay so i am testing for ammonium so i must make sure that i have enough randomness paper all right so let's get started so i wouldn't do the i would do the heating bit of the solid again because i already showed you enough on water crystallization so i'll just scoop out ammonium iron 2 sulfate first so clean straight to that. This one hasn't been used for a long time. Okay? So ammonium iron 2 sulfate is not a common thing in all level obviously, but um, mixture is a common thing. And then formula of ammonium sulfate, formula of iron 2 sulfate is a common thing. And of course qualitative analysis it's just observation, so they could potentially ask you anything they want, all right? So I think I dissolved enough of the solid, I think. Should be all right, okay? So this is ammonium iron 2 sulfate. Ammonium iron 2 sulfate. I'm going to make a solution of this. This is in water, so it's meant to be a bit pale green in water, but I think the sample is really all, so I'm not sure whether it will work or not, 
I'm sure the majority of it is still iron 2 but as you know iron 2 can get oxidized to iron 3 uh, as a solid it don't think it's that quickly but uh, I've got a solution so it's a bit colored but again color like this is very difficult to it's supposed to be a clear solution all ammonium salts are soluble in water uh, I will test for the anion very quickly because we know that it is a sulfate so I won't go and look for other anions now uh, because my focus will be my focus will be on the sulfate where I use barium nitrate or barium chloride okay so they will do the same thing this is almost a clear solution so it's a bit colored okay what happened you get a precipitate you get a white color precipitate Sometimes the white color is not that clear because remember you have the presence of a transition metal compound and even though the transition metal compound does not react with barium nitrate but then in the presence of other colors it can be difficult to see the color that you want to see but this is very clearly a precipitate and if you get a precipitate with barium nitrate it must be a white precipitate and that white precipitate is an indication of barium sulfate being formed right? so you can write a question for it and um, you have to know how to write the question for it because it's a classic precipitation reaction so this is a classic precipitation reaction we are adding barium 2 plus to something that contains sulfate so you get barium sulfate which is a solid this is aqueous and aqueous okay this is a white precipitate and that was exactly what we got and we were just testing for the sulfate and now we need to test for now we need to test for the iron 2 plus as well as as well as the NH4 plus for this iron 2 plus is a cation and because it is a cation so what we do what we do is we need to use uh, we can use ammonia we can also use sodium hydroxide in fact I'll show you the result with both sodium hydroxide and ammonia so realistically speaking I need to divide it into another portion so that so that we can test with ammonia so usually you'll be given a lot more solution than this this is actually lesser than 1 cm cube 1 cm cube is around that much so I'm just using half the volume which uh, usually you will use a bit more but when you have a lot more of the solution the test tubes you will need a lot more of it for it to to have an equal amount before you add in excess right so let's try ammonia first okay let's try with actually let's try sodium hydroxide first okay so this is the ammonium iron 2 ammonium iron 2 sulfate we already confirmed the sulfate this is a sodium hydroxide i'm just adding this thing there this is good okay because it's still it's still green okay how we can see is a dirty green precipitate so I'm wearing a dirty well this is kind of green green t-shirt I guess so it's pretty much the same kind of color as my t-shirt so don't worry about Sully in the background but anyway uh, so it looks pretty much like the color of my t-shirt I wasn't planning on this but anyway um, if you cannot see color very well get a white background use a white tile or something so I just purposely shake it on the side I want you to see roughly what happened on the side okay this was in sodium hydroxide so you get a precipitate because you cannot see through you get a yellow well not yellow sorry you get a green precipitate but in your qualitative analysis you know that green precipitate could also mean the presence of chromium 3 because chromium 3 hydroxide is also a green precipitate that's why we need to add excess sodium hydroxide to make sure what is going on okay so what I'm gonna do now is I get a green precipitate so I added almost equal amount right so I'm gonna add excess now adding excess I see what happened do you get a precipitate yes the precipitate remains because as you can see you cannot see one part of my eye because this is not a solution you can shake 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 this is not a solution it is not see-through because this is a precipitate so you get a dirty green precipitate 
which is insoluble in excess. So when you have iron 2 plus, we add aqueous NaOH, so we get, well, actually this is what you write in your column, a dirty green, or you say green, that would have been all right, precipitate is formed, but that is not enough because as I said, it could also represent chromium-3 hydroxide. That's why we need to add an excess, but then it is insoluble. So the precipitate is insoluble in excess. So maybe I should write the precipitate because it could have been in another uh, box, right? The precipitate is insoluble in excess aqueous NaOH, or you can write NaOH aqueous. Okay, so this confirms, therefore, iron 2 plus is present. On its own, if you just say a dirty green precipitate is formed, it does not confirm iron 2 plus is present until you mention the result of what happened when you add an excess. Okay, there's actually another observation that you are supposed to take note of. This is usually not stated in the table, or usually not uh, what is stated in the theory unless you actually do the practical and you can see it, okay? I want you to see very carefully what happened on the upper part of the tube, all right? So in the presence of excess hydroxide, a little bit of the iron 2 hydroxide on top is supposed to get oxidized. I think I mentioned in my other qualitative analysis video. You see the upper part of the tube here? You see they're a bit uh, reddish brown. And that was because I swirl around the I swirl around the iron two hydroxide onto the site, and the iron two hydroxide in the presence of uh, more hydroxide in the presence of oxygen in the atmosphere, iron two hydroxide get oxidized. Oxidation iron two become iron three. So you, you get this iron three hydroxide, which is a reddish brown PPT, as we will see later on when I did the qualitative when I do when I'm going to do the qualitative analysis on ammonium iron 3 hydroxide okay so just to finish off i want to test for the cation as well because they can provide this uh, scenario as a as a mystery to you something to investigate they say it contains another colorless uh, cation another cation which produce colorless solution and how do you test for it well in the presence of sodium hydroxide when you get a green color precipitate can you tell calcium is present you cannot because Calcium hydroxide, aluminium hydroxide, zinc hydroxide, those are all white precipitate. And if they are white precipitate, then it's very hard to see the color uh, in the background of these uh, um, colored compounds, all right? So that's why it's difficult to identify those cations, but it's easy to identify ammonium cations. So I'm just gonna heat it. So back to Bunsen burner. Make sure the air hole is closed. Just wanna prepare my red lemon paper. So that I can test for my ammonium ions. I want to moisten it. Moisten it with some distilled water. And we are ready. So something that contains ammonium ions. Okay, and then in the presence of uh, sodium hydroxide, when I heat it, I will get a pungent gas, P-U-N-G-E-N-T. You heat it until it doesn't exactly boil, but it reaches the kind of boiling point because Bunsen burner heat is actually very intense when it's on blue flame, okay? Not when it's on yellow flame, okay? So you never heat with the yellow flame. It's starting to, starting to boil already. I get a bit of gas given out already. Okay, the gas is given out. Oh no! Okay, I better heat it a bit more. It's not very clear. Oops! Okay, that's why we need to... That's why we need to uh, actually heat it in a boiling tube because a boiling tube is deeper in depth and boiling tube uh, well, can store more volume. So you can see the red lemon paper has turned blue there. I didn't put the red lemon paper inside because it's got sodium hydroxide on the side of the test tube. So I'm just testing for the gas. All right. Be careful with fire, yeah. So that's the number one danger. 